Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up a conditional access policy to block the access to corporate documents on untrusted devices. And this is a policy that's available with either Azure AD P1 or it does come with M365 Business because it does come with conditional access but some of the features are limited which I'll show you here. So this is the end result of what we're going to do today. This is an end user coming in and they are going to access their mail on the web on a personal device like their web uh, laptop and also maybe their personal cell phone, something like that. This device that they're on is not compliant. It's not on your network and you don't want them to be able to download this resource, but you still want them to be productive. So we set up this policy so that they can see here, they can modify this document and they can collaborate on it with other members of their team but they don't allow people to download, print, or sync um, at all when it's on this device. So this is a great policy to put into place both for DLP and for security. So getting into the setup here, if we pop into this tenant, this is a test tenant with M365 business set up. And like I mentioned, for the licensing requirements, you at least want conditional access, but the feature set, the full feature set comes with Azure AD P1. Now what we do here is we come into the conditional access section, which you can get to by going to Azure Active Directory, clicking on Azure Active Directory, and going down to Security, and then Conditional Access. So the first thing that we want to do here is create the policy itself. Um, so this is the one I created for this one, this is what you'll want to do. If you're not familiar with conditional access, it uses user and device trust claims to grant access to certain resources within the company. So it's a basic if-then statement where you have your conditions that are being met and then you're giving certain controls uh, over give, granting access like so heightened security in the case of what we're doing today being the device compliance and being on a trusted network. So we have the named locations here. You can define your trusted perimeter network on these named locations, and this is what we're going to put in here as well too. Users and groups, I've scoped this out to one user that I'm going to show you as my test user in the example, but you can scope this out to all users. might be best if you want to prevent this, uh, prevent download of this activity. This is something I would recommend rolling out in waves just so you don't cause disruption. And under the cloud apps, this is where we want to define specifically Exchange Online. Um, this doesn't support all applications today. It only supports Exchange Online and uh, SharePoint Online from the standpoint of this policy itself where we're blocking the download. The conditions that I put in here um, didn't configure this specific to any device platform. I could scope this to only Windows devices if I wanted to but it defaults to all, so not only personal laptops, Windows devices, but also iOS and Android. For the locations, uh, what I've gone and done here is I've said yes, I want to configure this. I want this to be done on any location, but I want to exclude my trusted location. So it's saying if you're on my network, then I will allow you to download this document and access it uh, locally. So something that you can consider, I put it in place because I, I think that would make sense, but may not in all cases. So you want to configure this and say yes and select browser and that will allow them to access it from the browser but again still not be able to download and then this one device state you configure you click yes and then you can exclude mark as compliant so you want to have intune in place intune is what it's saying is uh, making this device compliant itself and you're saying if the device is enrolled into Intune, then they can go ahead and download it because you have compliance policies and protection on that device to know if it's unhealthy and making sure anything can get infected. So that's the, the policies that you want to select there. You don't have to do anything under grants, but under session, you want to just select use app enforced restrictions. So this is everything from the policy standpoint. Again, consider doing the on, uh, but only enrolling it into certain users for piloting or report only. So report only is going to tell you when this is triggered. So you can get an idea before you roll this out centrally how many users are going to be affected by this. So the second thing that we need to do that's not available in the admin portal today, maybe coming soon, is we have to run a couple of PowerShell commandlets to change our mailbox policy for conditional access to be read only for this as well too. 
So this is an article that I'll link below from Elliot Monroe. It creates a lot of great content um, around Microsoft, but this specifically has all the instructions and also the um, commandlets that you'll want to run here as well. I've gone ahead and already done this. The first thing you'll want to do probably is run the commandlet to get your mailbox policies. So you'll want to know what the ID, or I should say the identity of this one here, um, of your default mailbox policy. It is most likely it's this, but it could be something different if you have a more legacy tenant. You'll connect to Exchange Online with the PowerShell commandlets there, sign in with the global administrator, and then after you've got garnered your identity of uh, your policy there, you're going to say, we're going to set this, we're setting it to the, the default policy. And that's in the case if you had that name, but the identity is whatever the name of this is up top here. And then for the conditional access policy, you can say read only. You could say none as well too, if you want to completely block access to the documents altogether outside of that. So I still like read only because we are, we're not inhibiting productivity, but we are being more compliant and secure. So once you set this up here, if you're an M365 business tenant, this is where some of the lack of features come into play, I should say. So normally this is a user that we've applied this to, or this is a tenant that we've applied this to. We didn't exactly assign it to Adele though, we assigned it to Alex. But you can see here in her experience, she's online, she's looking at this document, she has the availability to download it, and she also has the download button here. And then from the standpoint of Alex, who we actually assign the profile to, if we come into his account, again, this is Alex now, he doesn't have these options. So there's no download button. And if we click the drop down here, there's no download button as well. But the end user experience is a little bit different from the standpoint of you having an ADP1 license. So if he tries to open this, it actually redirects to the new tab in Word, and technically he could just download this to his device. So it's a bit of a workaround, so it's kind of a loophole there that users can go through. I would highly recommend, I mean, still turning it on. If you have M365B, it can't hurt. But the other experience, which I showed you earlier, is this, which is they're getting this banner, which is showing them and telling them that they can't access this, they can't download it, print or sync and it's actually fully preventing their access. So keep that in mind when you're trying to roll this out. I think this is pretty powerful, definitely something that I would implement, especially for your compliance customers. But that's everything I wanted to show you guys today. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Like or subscribe if you'd like to see more content on Intune and M365.